Hello ladies and gents, I'm the Rev, and welcome to the Start Point Gemini 2 Beginner's Guide Ships Edition. Today we're going to be going over the various types of ships. There are 10 different classes and over 70 different designs of ships. So I'm going to break these up as always so you guys can see what's what and be able to go to the section that you want to. Now today we're going to focus on the gunship and the corvette because I don't think anyone wants to sit through a two hour video. I'm going to break them all up. It will probably take four videos total to go over all of the basic ship designs. So some things you want to keep in mind is one, every single planet, if you can land on it, and it's not hostile towards you, will you'll be able to buy ships at. Anywhere from one or two up to six or seven. Some of these star stations here, especially the Virgo, you can get them here as well. But the thing to keep in mind is that not all space stations sell them. It appears from what I've seen that most in orbit around a planet will have something, but that's not always the case. Again, it's somewhat randomized but if you're looking for the largest selections Virgo and the planet here planet Trinity appear to have the biggest selection also with a lot of the updates these are the two areas that the devs put things first in so let's get to the gunships load one out and I'll show you guys exactly what to do Alrighty folks, now to purchase your ship, you go up into the top left corner here and you hit Shipyard. You will give Available and Compare. This is what we currently have. It'll show you your system models and such. Go back to Available Statistics now. I have already gotten a perfect gunship to load out. So we're going to transfer command to our new gunship. And here we go. We've got a completely empty gunship. It's only got 700 hull points. Now, these gunships are the smallest yet fastest and most maneuverable in the game. So, first things first, you go to your loadout screen, and you see we've only got one gun here. Now, when you add turret, what that means is you add the effective area of where you're going to shoot. In other words, if you do not have the money to add turrets, it's going to narrow your ability to shoot. So, instead of this has three turrets, so it will take and shoot in a 180 degree area. But, it will not shoot under you. It will shoot somewhat above you, but it will not shut shoot under you or behind you. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Now, when it comes to loadout, you have your ship, and this is everything that I have that is extra that I do not have equipped on other ships. It will go here. These are all available to be put into this section. Now, if you go to the Systems tab, you can have your ship, which is what you already have, and then what's in the dry dock. Dry dock is what is at your current location. And you can go through here and look and see. Now, we got sort, which is, it's a beam weapon. Hit points, 210. Now, the hit points means it's going to add hit points to your ship. Average damage, 15. Rate of fire, 0.2. Energy cost, 0.8. Range, 450. And you can go through, and depending on what you can afford, as you can see there are various types, and you go deeper down, and it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Right down to here, to the plasma cannon, that's got 170 average damage, with hit points 330. I don't know if I have one of those. Mm, yes, I already do. Cool. And then we get into the heavy weapons. Now, with the loadout screen as well, this does not have any heavy weapons. You can see right here, no heavy weapons on battery because it's a gunship and it's so small. The, but when you go to the next level, which is the Corvette, they do. Now, when you start the game, you do get a Corvette currently. I don't know if the devs are going to do that when they launch the game, but currently that's what we all get. And that's what you saw in the first opening scene, what I was flying around. So back to equipment. 
I should say, back to systems, you go through and depending on the size and the capability of the ship, it will let you only load so many heavy weapons and rounds as well as where you can place them on the ship. So when we go to enhancements, now when it comes to enhancements it's a little different. You can go through and you look here and these are basically bonuses to all of your ship's systems. So you click on the system that you want to enhance and then you start working your way and you decide what you want to get. So here we have extra shield damage, battery energy, additional radiation damage. Normally the more expensive they are, the better. But not always. It depends on how you want to design your ship's systems. So here we have battery, energy recharge, weapon range, critical hit damage, critical hit da cha uh, chance and damage. Keep going down and here you see so we've got three different ones that are a hundred thousand protection from hack attempts additional radiation damage additional MP shield damage battery energy weapons range damage to veterans additional EMP event damage so we'll put that on then we move down here and we click on our transporter so what do we want to do with that? Well, again, you start at the top, you work your way down, and you decide what you think will be the best. Let's see, system hit points, chance to deflect. Mm, I don't know. In a smaller gunship, I would think I would just want as much protection as possible. So you can flat out just add system his hit points. Let's see. No point in putting, uh, having anything in transport arena on a small gunship, you're not going to be able to supply. Small gunships, yes, they're fast, they're maneuverable, but they work best if you are with other forces, like around space stations and things like that, trying to defend them, because otherwise you get, will get overwhelmed and you'll get smoked because your hull, your hull, H-U-L-E, I think, anyways, it is so low. They're not beefy. It will not take long for someone to rip right through your shields and then rip right through you. So I would think trying to find something from a hack attempts, a transporter, oh boy. There we go, system hit points, chance to deflect incoming things, so we'll put that on there. Alright, propulsion. As you can see, let's see again, we go through, what's this one? Speed, there we go, Mo uh, ma maneuverability and acceleration. So we'll mount that. Now we've got our power core. Again, depending on what you want to do and what you can afford in your ship, depending on how and what you use and way the way you earn things, we've got recharge rate. Uh, protection from hack attempts is obviously... Now, power recharge rate, what that means is once your weapons have run dry, how quickly your weapons recharge and all the other systems. So we go down here, and boy, that one's got a lot. So we'll just put that one on there. Now your shield generator. This one we're going to want to, of course, look for high hit points. What is this? Energy resistance, projectile resistance, and plasma resistance. That's a pretty good balance because you want something for your shields that's going to deflect all the different types of weapons that you're going to be coming at you. Now, as you learn the different classes that you'll be going against, and you'll know you'll be able to go into a sector where they predominantly use certain types of weapons, you can adjust accordingly. Here, we're just going to keep it easy. Then we have our grappler, or no, our sensor, I'm sorry. And of course, this is to help detect cloaked ships and other such things in the area. There we go, more system hit points and protection from hacks. That's probably the best. Again, you really want to try to overprotect a smaller gunship because it'll get smoked otherwise. Like I said, it's more for the defense of small air. Ooh, look at that. System hit points, protection, grapple range, chance to weaken shields. Ooh, awesome. So, 
we'll go back to our loadout screen. Let's see. What do we have that's particularly effective? Hmm, 170. That's not bad. So we'll just hit the mount button, put that bad boy on there. Now, the next thing you're going to, of course, want to do after you have done your enhancements and your systems is the equipment. As always, you can go through and anything you've already killed, you can, of course, sell off or anything you think you might need. Now, one of the things I do suggest is that you do keep a sizable portion of the T drives because for the simple fact that is an emergency oh shit button if you are getting smoked you pop that bad boy you get the hell out of there otherwise you will die it has saved my butt more than once and then after you've gone through if you have any money left and you've uh, purchased what you want in the equipment screen you go to customize as you can see here choose your logo which you can pick the color of your ship name let's see how about Oh boy. There we go. Small fry. And we'll keep that white. And then, of course, you can do glossiness value, glossiness range, and reflection from the things in the area. Once all those are done, you just have to hit OK. Now, over here, of course, as always with the other guides that I've showed you, if you go to episode one or two it will explain all of the various systems here so we'll just jump out and I will show you guys some of the incredible maneuverability of these ships now you can see the little gunship here is a little different looking let's keep looking there we go there's what I was looking for now we'll go over here we'll give her full juice and I'll show you guys how maneuverable these little bad boys are. Now, the devs have done a real good job as you go up in size and strength of being able to... They've really done a good job of balancing the ship so you can tell that you... I mean, you really feel like there's a weight to some of the ships. And as you can see... This guy really moves quickly around. Now, anyone that has already purchased the game and has the Corvette, you'll be able to see the incredible difference. Whoa! Gonna hit stuff. <laughs> Whoops. But you can see how incredibly maneuverable this ship is as I zip around here through the Star Station. Space Station. You can see we can go in, we can go out, up, down, left, right. All those different things, but you can see how incredibly maneuverable this ship is. So, folks, there we go. There is an explanation and a full loadout for you of the gunship. Now, next up, we're going to be doing a Corvette. It will not be what you start with because I thought you folks would like to see different designs and you'll all be starting with the Meridian. So I am going to pick a different ship and we'll go through. We'll load it out just like we did this one with a little less explanation. And then we'll end this series and then we'll get set up and we will do the next. Alrighty, folks, just real quickly here, I wanted to show you what our little gunship looks like. I had to change the colors because blue didn't look very good here for some reason. I could not get it to show the beauty of this little ship. So, of course, crank those engines and just look at this thing. It's always just a beautiful little ship, maneuverable, fast, quick. Just don't got a whole lot of hole to it, so it will get chewed up. There you go, give you an idea of what it looks like. And now on to Corvettes. Alrighty, ladies and gents. So, once you have 
found the area that or the ship that you want of course and you buy it from the shipyard you go to your hangar or visit your garage and it will always come in in the last part underneath everything else here we have the horizon and I picked it because it has 3200 hull the cargo is 50 you can carry 30 troops and if I sold it back it'd be uh, nowhere near what it cost me so of course you hit transfer command and we've got a full loadout here now like the ship that we start with it has one main battery so let's take a look at our batteries here we got 219 for damage 273 this is the best one I think I've found so far I haven't found uh, from everything I've been looking around so you want to keep your eyes open for the hammer for your main weapon and you go up here and you can see we need to start adding turrets so we add up our turrets add turrets now since these guys only have one turret the effective firing range is going to be nowhere near what you would normally think but you've got almost a full range here and we go here of course rearm or you can go to your ship here and you can hit rearm either way but the heavy weapons only fire in the way that they are mounted so this will shoot directly out of the front of the ship now if you had one here it would be right here and it would shoot def directly to the right of the ship and to the left and in the pre some of the previous um, guides I've shown you you can do that now as again as we go through and I'm showing the various ships here and as more capabilities come through we might push into carb uh, combat but with the gunship it was way too dangerous because those things are so small as they can chew you up and get chewed up a very quick quickly so let's look at what do we want to put in our smaller light weapons well let's look through what we've got and of course we've got this the light weapons at 170 but let's check our dry dock see if there's anything good in here go them up no they're all the same okay and of course as you go to different space stations and spaceships all of the dry dock things will change so you'll want to of course keep your various options open don't just go to Virgo or the Trinity States to do all the purchasing because there is a lot of different things out there so I think we'll just mount these bad boys with the plasmatic three and at least now the big difference between the ship we start with whoops not that all right and oh crud oh, well that's fine um your ship only has the front range this one has actually got a back door shooter which is good because if you're being fired at and you use the chase cam which is the k key after you've reset the bindings at least be able to continue to do damage while you're being chased which is always a good thing so let's go look at our enhancements of course we'll start up here and let's see what is this one shield damage battery and different damage I'm just personally more of a combat focused oriented person I'm not about easing myself in things I have so much fun personally just taking the biggest and baddest ship that I have and pushing into enemy, enemy territory and killing everything that I can. But of course, that is my preference and not everyone does the same. Of course, see, here we go. We've got the one that I like, which is the weapon range, damage veterans, additional EMP damage. So we'll put that on all of our systems here. All of our light ones. Alright, so let's see what the big beasts got for us. Additional P, heavy weapon accuracy, critical hit damage. Now that's pretty damn good. What is the Verisoft? Shield damage, blast radius, heavy weapons down. All right. Well, we'll go with that. All righty. Now, cloak. We did not have a cloak before. So, of course, you'll want to go through. you want to see what you have. Hit points, protect your ramp. That firing doesn't deactivate cloaking. Now that's one of the ones. It It's okay. But unfortunately every time I fire my weapons I lose my cloak but we'll throw it on there anyways then of course we have the transporter 
And again, it's all up to you and decisions and what you can afford and what you want. And we're going to probably just go through and put in most of the same that we had before. Speed maneuverability and acceleration. Which is always good for engines. You want to make sure that you can juke and jive and go up and down and left and right. And be able to get quickly to the combat and not have people get out of your field of firing arc range because you'll get smoked. And of course with the power core you always want to, at least in my opinion, look for something that has power and power recharge rate. So we'll put that on there. And then you've got your shield generator, and again, energy resistance. It's always that's this is one of the best balanced ones because of what you'll be going against. Again, depending on who you're fighting and the areas you go into, as you learn what those areas predominantly have ship wise, you can figure out, of course, what you want to load up with. Now, Grappler. This ship, I have captured a lot of ships with a Corvette, so it is definitely doable. You just need to figure out what you want to put on it. Boy. Hmm. Decisions. Decisions. Alright, we'll put system hit points and protection from hacks. That's always a good thing. And our grappler. I'm sorry, that was sensors, wasn't it? Oh, such an idiot. And then we have the grappler. And, of course, we'll want to go through. And we'll just put that on there. Now, I didn't say this in the first one, but what you also want to do is take a look. When you put the mouse over it, over your weapons, you'll see in green that now my range has been extended. And it's been extended by a pretty good amount. It's exactly what I want. So we go look at our heavy battery range. And now we've got... We've boosted our average damage to 313 and our blast radius to 260 so we will definitely kick some serious ass here and even in the back tail end our range is up to 800 which is awesome here the range is really far so you know as you see the enhancements really can make a difference so we go down here now and we look and look at that hit points firewalls cloak stability all of the things that we really want to make sure we keep buffed in case you get do get confused and if you do have enough money you can you know go through these with one ships and as you learn the ships you'll figure out with your own play style how you want to load out your ships do keep in mind though you cannot get refunds on these you can sell the weapons but you cannot sell the enhancements back on a ship something you do need to keep in mind only the weapons so as we go through here, just a good bump on our hit points, which is always a good thing. Hit points. Of course, it does not show the resistances, but we'll all show you real quick where those are, firewall, hit points. So if you go to ship, you can now see that the energy, projectile, and plasma is all... All of these are all much better now. And again, as we go deeper and deeper into things with the EMPs, things of that nature, those are what will shut down your FTL drives. So depending on how beefy of a ship and what your plans are, again, you'll want to try and balance these for what you're going to be going into. Now, we've already been over that, so let's take a quick look at the equipments. As always, as I suggest, you always have at least 10 to 20 of the... T jump drives, they you they are like anything else. You fire them off, and you have to wait for it to recharge. The other thing I would suggest, and I've been playing around, and this is just new to the game with an update, is Seth. This bad boy is a additional freaking. How do I describe it? It is an additional weapons platform that pops up behind your ship. And then follows you as long as you don't go into any of your higher engine modes. And you get an additional just great source of combat to help you take on big forces. These things are great. Um, you don't have to always use them. But personally so far from my playing, I think they did a fantastic job with the Th Seths. I'm working on buying as many as I can because I enjoy them thoroughly. And of course then we have Customize. Now I haven't touched this one. So we'll go through here. And personally, 
all of my ships have the same logo, which is the space dragon, because, well, that's just a point of my person personality. So let's see, why don't we make this bad boy everything red? How about that? Co Cordoba. No, I don't like that name. We'll have to think of something else. What would be a good ship name for this guy? He's medium-sized. He's not big and beefy. He's okay. He's quick. He's maneuverable. Squirrely. Yeah, he's squirrely. That sounds good. We'll leave that in white so it stands out. And then we'll just real quickly go through, make everything else bright red. Ooh, blood red. And of course, we'll bring down that glossiness value. I don't know. Everybody has their own opinion when, of course, it's your ship. Design it the hell and decorate it the hell any way that you want. It's incredible customability, and I really do enjoy it. Alrighty, so, of course, after you do that, let's take her out and see what she looks like. Okay. Now, you'll see a big difference. And, okay, we've got our engines up here. That's now, where's our space station? Oh, good, we've got a hostile. Awesome. So, let's go kill him. And I can show you guys some a different, effective way to take these little suckers on. Of course, as always, I turn on... Engaging automated protocols. All weapons on auto mode. All of my systems, everything's on auto mode. Let's take this guy down now. Well, he's a little bitty guy, isn't he? He ain't gonna make it along with me. Find my big weapon at him. I'll show you guys. Oh, I'm not even he's not even gonna last long enough. Nope. He's one dead SOB. And I don't even have my full weapon systems up. We've destroyed and he's target. toast. Woohoo! So, of course, you always want to make sure when you find a derelict, that's you. Turn off your automatic fire. Because they will not fire on derelicts. You have to do it. So, it's simply the right button. And you'll see... You get experience for every hole that you smoke. So you get experience for blowing up the ship. And of course, you want to collect it. And then you get experience for destroying the hole. You always want to do that, as you can see down here. With the experience bar, it's always a good idea. So I will give you a real quick view of the ship here. She is a pretty little beast, isn't she? Alrighty, folks. So, that is the first of four videos that I'm going to be doing, showing you the different class types. Now, we have, like I said, there's ten total, and I'm going to do all of the gunships and the ships like this, the ones that you use for big old combat. And then, I will show you the two different smaller sized um they're not really set up for combat. It's for more of if you want to do mining or you want to do savaging of holes. Although you will be attacked if you try to savage salvage holes sometimes, depending on when and where you are on the map. So it is all up to you. Now, real quick here, let's see, we've got... Frigates, destroyers, cruisers, battleships, dreadnoughts, and carriers. And then the two other two. I'll give you an underside view here. Can't really see much. Oh, that is just so pretty. I, I'm sorry. I'm still always just so incredibly impressed with the graphicalness of this game. And then we've got freighters and a freight liners, which are two different sized. One's a little smaller, one's a little bigger. If you want to go out and you want to make money, you want to dig up. All of these asteroids and mine asteroids and things like that. It is a very viable way to make money in the games that you can afford. One of these beautiful beasts. Again, this is the Corvette. And I'd like to thank you for watching. My name is The Rev. 
and I will see you next time if the gods don't get me first. Or the wife. <laughs>